So in this video, we're going to talk about the substitution method of integration here. Um, so the substitution method, essentially what we've got here is something where we're sort of doing the reverse of or we're undoing the chain rule for derivatives. So we take a derivative rule, kind of find an opposite or an inverse or undoing here. So let's just review the chain rule quick um, for derivatives. So chain rule, we're going to do an example here. So if you take a derivative of the function sine of x squared plus 3x minus 1, so it's like sine of x, but we've got a complicated thing for x here. So what you do is you take your derivative of sine, that's cosine, so you get cosine of the original inside, x squared plus 3x minus 1, but you have to multiply on the outside by, this, by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 1, derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 3x is 3, derivative of negative 1 is 0. So you get a derivative of 2x plus 3. So this is this chain rule for derivative here. So that's not really substitution, but we're going to kind of go backwards for substitution. So let's look at an example here. Suppose I want to find an antiderivative of cosine of x squared plus 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 3 dx. Now, you should be able to look at our chain rule example and say I took this derivative here and I got an answer that's the thing we're trying to find the antiderivative of. So clearly our answer really should be sine of x squared plus 3x minus 1 and then with a plus c. Let's sort of see how the substitution method works here. So what I would do here is I'd recognize cosine of something complicated. Well, I could find an antiderivative of cosine of there's just x here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal x squared plus 3x minus 1. That makes this part cosine of u. Here. However, what I have to do is take a really differential of u, or think of it maybe as a derivative, is that my du, it's the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 1, is 2x plus 3. I'll explain why we've got the green and red here in a bit. And then what you do is when you sort of do this integral, I'm just going to write this up again, you'll notice this x squared plus 3x minus 1, that's our u, that existed in our original, in our original integral. Also, our du, our differential, 2x plus 3 dx, also exists in the original integral. Here. So this worked out really well. We'll see some examples where you have to kind of manipulate things a bit to make this work. And so what we can do is substitute in for u, u is x squared plus 3x minus 1, so that becomes cosine u. And then the 2x plus 3 times the dx gets replaced with the du. So that du is right there. And our, we get an antiderivative or integral of cosine of u du. So you integrate that. An uh, antiderivative of cosine u is sine u. Note it's positive sine u. The derivative of cosine is a negative sine u. But if you differentiated sine u, you'd get positive cosine u, which is what we have. So you get sine u plus c. Now you can't stop there as an answer because the original problem was phrased in terms of x's. So our answer should have x's in there, being an indefinite integral. And so when I take my antiderivative, or sorry, when I take my sine u plus c, I have to plug my u back in, this x squared plus 3x minus 1. So I get sine of u, but that's sine of x squared plus 3x minus 1 plus c, and that's our answer. Okay, let's look at another one here, another example, maybe a little more fresh, where we haven't done the chain rule part ahead of time. So still in the trig world here, we're going to do an antiderivative of sine of 4x dx. So I look at this and I think, oh, if this was sine of x, I'd be able to differentiate this. So I'm going to let u equal 4x. And then the differential of u is, well, the derivative of 4x is 4, so I get 4dx for my differential. I'm just going to plug those things in. So I get sine of 4x dx. Oh, I was going to just plug those things in, but I have to do a little bit of pre-processing here. Um, I look at this sine 4x dx. I've got my 4x there. But this du is 4dx. I don't have 4dx, I have dx. So I'm going to rewrite this um, to make this work. There's other ways to deal with this bookkeeping, but this is the way I'm going to do. And so what I'd like to do is just add a 4 here in front of the dx. So I have 4dx, but I can't just multiply by 4 without changing the value. So I multiply by 1 fourth on the outside or maybe on the inside and then factor that out. But if I did the 1 fourth times 4, those two things would cancel and give me the sign 4x. I'm making this sort of look more complicated, but my goal was to get the 4dx here, because that's what du was. 
Now I do my well, antiderivative. I have the 1 fourth sine 4x. Four that's u. 4 dx. That's du. So I've got 1 fourth sine u du. And I guess now I can do my antiderivative. Antiderivative sine of u du. That's negative cosine u du. So I pick up a negative, co or sorry, ne just negative cosine u. No du in the antiderivative. I pick up a negative cosine u. Again, this feels weird if you're not used to it with the trig functions. But if you differentiated cosine u, you'd get a negative sine u. So you need this negative to sort of make the negative go away, to have two negatives cancel. And I always want to have my plus c for my integration constant. So I end up with negative 1 fourth cosine x plus c. Okay, next bit, we're going to do some more examples. We're going to start throwing in some definite integrals. That'll be, we'll put bounds here and just see things that are a little bit trickier.